my grandpa fought for Italy in World War II, and he was actually part of one of the groups that got captured and put in concentration camps. Surprisingly or shockingly, he made it out of the camp. But it seems that while my grandfather was in the camp, a German soldier coming through town that my grandma was in in today's video, we're going to be talking about something that I've shockingly never spoken about before. We've been running this channel for eight or nine years, and you'd think that the topic of my biggest fear around taking psychedelics would have come to light by now, but it hasn't. It just came to me recently after I did a re reaction to a Datura report, which reminded me of it. I was like, oh my gosh, I've never talked about this. Now, this applies to any compound, whether it be mushrooms, acid, probably not DMT, more so ayahuasca, the longer lasting ones, generally ones where the trip goes on for more than 10 minutes. This is going to be a very interesting story because we're going to go off base for a while. I'm just warning you. It's going to, we're going to work around a few side trails that are going to lead back up to the main ones. Everything will connect eventually. Let's get on this, uh, this hike through the wilderness as to why I am or what my biggest fear is. So how do I start this? So basically I've always had this fear of unlocking latent schizophrenia within myself because I have a cousin who had schizophrenia who unfortunately um, committed suicide. I was in my early 20s when this happened. I didn't have my first trip till 26. And this fear has always been in the back of my head because I had read that psychedelics can unlock latent mental illness. Now, here's the thing. I found out that it's actually not directly in my family. And you would say, well, that doesn't make sense. You said that your cousin has it. Aha, uh -huh. this is the story. This is where it gets interesting. So keep in mind, I only found this out within the past couple of years, but before that, this fear was always prevalent in my mind. When I would go deep, it would always be in the back of my head. I'd always have this fear of like, oh my God, am I, am I going to feel like this forever? A lot of people have this fear, but for me, I knew that I had this in my family and it scared the shit out of me. Anyway, so here's how I was wrong. My dad, he decided to get a DNA test done a couple of years ago. And I always wondered as a kid, like, how come my cousins and my uncle are like 6263 and I'm like 5'5"? Five, five? And my dad's like five, six, like it never made sense to me. When I was a kid, my parents would always be like, oh, don't worry, Adam, you'll get taller. Look at your cousins. They didn't start growing until like 16. No, no, they're not the same goddamn blood as me. Fuck. <sighs> On the DNA site, like it pairs you with relatives. So my dad found out that his brother, my uncle, actually had a son that he had never told anybody about. But the DNA didn't completely match up when they analyzed it, which told my dad through this unknown son who was looking for his dad, which is my uncle, <laughs> that my dad and his brother had different fathers. Okay, so to summarize, my dad took a DNA test. He found an unknown what appeared to be half nephew, which prompted my dad's brother, my uncle, to take a DNA test where they discovered that this random nephew who was looking for his dad was actually the son of my uncle, my dad's brother, signifying since the DNA didn't match up and they finally definitively saw it with my dad and my uncle's DNA test that they were actually half related. That is a crazy string of events. Which in regards to the story means that all these fears I've had of schizophrenia were void because it was actually a half cousin, which isn't a direct, you know, relative. And according to this chart here, even a first cousin, uncle or aunt would have given you a 2% risk, which is just 1% higher than the general population. So even from the get-go, my fear was stupid. I think it went down to 1%. It seems in the war, so my, my grandpa fought for Italy in World War II, and he was actually part of one of the groups that got captured and put in concentration camps. Surprisingly or shockingly, he made it out of the camp. But it seems that while my grandfather was in the camp, a German soldier coming through town that my grandma was in had a relationship with her or had sex with her that we don't know. And that's how my uncle was born. So completely different dad. And we've questioned like, you know, did my grandfather know it the whole time? Because he never talked about it to anybody. So finding this out, I then realized that, okay, so my cousin was actually just a half cousin. So the schizophrenia has never completely been in my family. So this fear is abnormal. Um, because let's get into the story of him because it was pretty traumatizing. So I had heard that he was schizophrenic and it started getting really, really bad. He was older than me. He was about six years older than me. No, it was more. I think he was eight or nine years older than me. When he hit 30, 30, 31, his schizophrenia got really bad. He couldn't work. Um, he had a drug problem. Uh, everyone said, oh, he's doing a lot of cocaine to cope with it. So my uncle had him on like house arrest. So he couldn't get these other drugs because the cocaine was making his schizophrenia worse. But his ex-girlfriend or girlfriend, whoever the hell she was, would actually sneak him coke through the window. So he was never able to actually get clean. He had a serious addiction to that. Probably other things. I remember he smoked like a damn chimney. I remember for uh, Christmas one year, 
my uncle got him a box of Marlboro Reds. And I remember thinking, what the fuck? Why would you give your son cigarettes for Christmas? Like you're supporting him dying of lung cancer and emphysema and all these other things. Like what, the, what a horrible gift. Anyway, the whole family was weird. Now it makes sense. They're not even full relatives. Anyway, he, I guess, just had enough of life. And uh, one day he went to the subway in Toronto and he jumped in front of the subway. And that is how he went. And what always surprised me is at the funeral, they had an open casket. Luckily, we arrived late. Man, I think after some time and possibly some complaints, they closed the casket because they had obviously had to stitch him back up. Very bizarre. I just always remember he went to a mausoleum. A mausoleum is like this big house where they just put dead bodies in the walls. And they were pushing him into the wall. And uh, I guess my aunt, was she my aunt? She was just screaming. Um, I'm sure I sound heartless. We were never very close. These are relatives that you would see at Christmas. I don't know if any of you can relate, but what I mean by relatives that you only see at Christmas is we would see them once a year for Christmas dinner, and that was the entire relationship. I remember growing up, it was like, I didn't really have any sense of extended family. So I never really got a firsthand sight of what his schizophrenia did to him. He just always seemed really slow. You know, like when someone's high on weed, like he just always seemed really just down and uh, like, yeah, he didn't seem happy, that's for sure. But anyway, onto the psychedelic fear. This is always in my head. I thought like, actually until 26 when I first tried acid, I said to myself, I will never try a psychedelic. I remember thinking after I'd been tripping for like five years, this is before I knew this, that it wasn't a full blood relative. I remember thinking like, okay, so if I haven't caught it now, maybe I'm safe, but it was always a fear. And I'm sure it helped guide my trips into some scary directions when like, especially when I'd start getting this feeling like I couldn't remember my name or who I was or where I was. It's ego dissolution that would scare me the most because i would think like this this must be what it's like to be schizophrenic to not know anything and um yeah so that is a very real fear that you can acquire around psychedelics they can bring out latent schizophrenia what i find more interesting is cannabis especially when it's abused and used from a very young age as the brain is still developing has actually been found to cause schizophrenia which is wild so psychedelics as far as we know, keep in mind this is just what we know so far, brings it out of you sooner, weed can actually create it. So there's one more danger to uh, excessive cannabis use. Uh, and we also don't know how other things like delirians affect schizophrenia. I, I just read a story where someone and his friend who both did high doses of a delirium called Datura ended up being diagnosed with schizophrenia, schizophrenic a few years later. It seems that there are a lot of compounds that probably do actually cause it versus reveal it. Um, Anyway, that is my story. That is my biggest fear on tripping. And now that I know it's not a full blood relative, I guess I no longer have to be scared. Plus, it generally will hit you in your mid-20s to early 30s. Once you pass that mark, my understanding is you're generally not going to become schizophrenic. But it is a very real concern. And if you are going to trip on psychedelics, you would be wise to check out your family history and see what mental illnesses they do have to make sure that you're not of risk of getting one yourself. Of course, the biggest risk would come from like your brother or a direct parent. Like a cousin is a lesser risk, but it's still, you know, it's still a risk. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. Like the video if you enjoyed this new location. And luckily this mic is so awesome, you can't hear all the lawnmowers going off, just faintly. Um, anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, head on over to psychsubstance.shop, pick up your very own trip blanket, still only have the mushrooms with no words, and I'm not wearing any Young LA to boost that. And check out uh, Derek, Gorilla Mind Products. Link below. Bye. What's... Oh, oh, let's let's check out the cameraman. He's got young LA. It's it's not in photo. There we there we go. Cody's wearing the young LA. So if if you want to pick up some young young LA, uh, use the code psyched for ten or fifteen percent off. All right.